What up, people? How you doing? My name is Knackers, aka Poop Daddy, and today I'm going to show you how to set up dual PC audio with the Beacon Mix Create. In a second, dual PC streaming has been around for a really long time, and while the popularity of dual PC streaming is dwindling a little bit because of the advancements in hardware and encoding, I'm still somebody who loves and prefers a dual PC setup. Right up until when the GoXLR was released, the only way to do dual PC audio was with an analog mixer, with NDI, or with voice meter. Each with pros and each with downfalls. The GoXLR made it really easy, but at a $500 price tag. However, God bless America, it's 2022, and the only thing you need to hook up dual PC audio is a bacon mix create. Uh, and some cables. <laughs> when I posted my launch day videos of all the Beacon hardware, one of the most common questions that I got about the Beacon Mix Create was whether it could be used uh, to interface dual PC audio. And the answer is yes. Let's fuck around and find out. So quick note, with this particular video and my setup, I'm going to have the Mix Create plugged into my streaming PC. If you are somebody that's gonna have their Mix Create plugged into their gaming PC, then you're gonna to wanna to check out the video that Beacon posted this past week. Kick Tripod did a fantastic tutorial about how that setup goes. And this video is a little redundant compared to his. I'm going into a little bit more detail as far as like the intricacies of default playback devices and, and settings. But if you're not using the Mix Create on your streaming PC, then this isn't the video for you. And you can have either. It's, it's up to your preference. If you have any additional questions outside of this scope, please check out Beacon's Discord server or check their website for their FAQ knowledge base. Okay, with that said, what do you need in order to make this happen? You obviously need the Beacon Mix Create. You also need two 3.5 millimeter TRS cables. Whatever length you need, I have 15 foot versions of both. The only other piece of hardware which is optional but you most likely will need it are some ground loop isolators. And if you're following this guide or kick tripods guide on the Beacon YouTube channel, you're almost guaranteed to need them. If you need some recommendations for hardware, I gotcha. As far as cables go, these ones from Ducabell are great. They are braided, uh, they are shielded, they feel great and they look great. If you search Amazon for ground loop isolators, you're gonna get a lot of the same devices. They, they look the same, but they're all made from different companies. The GLI that I like the most is this one by Pack. It looks like it was sold in a Radio Shack 30 years ago, so you know it's the real deal. Seriously though, the reason that I like this particular GLI is because it has a female end and a male end so that you don't need any additional cables. With these ground noise loop isolators, this comes with a three inch TRS cable that can come unplugged from the GLI itself. So I'm somebody who likes less points of failure, less places to become unplugged. So I usually just roll with this one. One of the most popular ones were these MPOW ones. Again, they have the detachable three inch TRS cable. I couldn't find these on Amazon anymore, um, but I have used these in the past and they're fine. Before we start plugging in cables, I wanna make just a couple changes to the hardware devices in Windows. I just wanna change the names uh, so things are a little bit more recognizable to you and just makes things a little bit easier down the road. So when you're looking at your audio devices in Windows, there's like a 99% chance that the manufacturer of the DAC is going to be Realtek and that the drivers are also Realtek. So those are the devices that you wanna look out for. So on the gaming PC, we want to rename our green audio out and our blue line in, and then do the same thing on the streaming PC. Let's start with the gaming PC first. So come down to your audio, right click and go to sounds. Now the, the green jack, the audio out, this is a playback device. So make sure you're on the playback tab. What up homies, Poop Daddy from the future. I forgot to show you a quick trick. If you right click on your audio and you go into sounds and you do not see any of the devices that you are supposed to see here, right click anywhere and make sure that show disconnected and disabled devices is there. You might have accidentally disabled it, or if you don't have a cable that's plugged into it yet, um, it's gonna be disconnected and it won't show. So make sure you have both of those selected. You're going to have to sort through your devices and figure out which one of those pertains to the green jack. Thankfully, Windows makes that easy. Right click on any device and go to properties and find the jack info that has the green circle. If it also has the black and the orange, that's fine. When you find that one, rename it to audio out and I'll always put real tech green in parentheses just as extra information. Once you're done with that, go to the recording tab. Now recording is going to be blue, your line in. So same thing with the playback devices, go through all of your recording devices. It's most likely one of the devices called real tech to find which one is the blue jack right click go to properties and under jack information look for the blue circle rename that one to line in with real tech blue in parentheses and then hit apply and okay repeating the same thing on the streaming pc go to your audio go to sounds 
Under playback, find the correct device, right click, go to properties and rename it to audio out real tech green, and then come to your recording devices, find your default recording device for that one and rename that one to line in real tech blue. Okay, you're done with the prep work. So I'm assuming if you're watching this video now, you already have a Beacon Mix Create and that's plugged in. So time to plug in the other cables. Let's move over to the diagram. I'll show you what that looks like. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. I know this looks like a lot. It's not, I promise. The bolded blue lines are the only hardwired physical connections that you have to make. Everything else that's red and green, these are all virtual or USB connections we're not gonna worry about right now. I'll bring you down to the simplified version of the cable hookup. <laughs> Take one end of the first 3.5 millimeter TRS cable and plug that into the green jack on your gaming PC. That is your line out or your audio out. Take the other end of that cable, plug it into the ground loop isolator, and then plug the ground loop isolator into the streaming PC using the blue line in. Next, take your second 3.5 millimeter TRS cable, plug that into the green audio out on your streaming PC, plug that cable into the ground loop isolator, and then plug the GLI into the gaming PC blues line in. The first connection going from gaming PC line out to streaming PC, that's where your Discord, your game, your music, your browser, all of that audio will be going out of that jack into the streaming PC. The other connection going out, the streaming PC audio's out, is just your microphone going from streaming PC to gaming PC. It is important to remember that the ground loop isolators need to be closest to the input part of the connection. So for example, gaming PC going out of the audio out green. You want the ground noise loop isolator closest to where the audio is going into the other device. Now, if you've tried hooking up your computers like this in the past and there's just way too much interference, either a hissing, a humming, or like a high pitch whine, stick around to later in the video, I'll have a different solution for you. So the rest of this setup is actually making all of the changes in the Beacon software. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we can hear all of the audio from the gaming PC on the streaming PC. Because right now, my headphones are plugged into my Beacon mic. The Beacon mic is connected to the streaming PC. So technically, I can't hear anything coming from the gaming PC right now. So on my gaming PC, I'm just going to get some audio going. I'm going to put on some Mark Rebier because he's fantastic. And also, he doesn't DMCA people for his music. All right, let's go over to the streaming PC. We want to add a hardware fader to our mixer. Now, if you don't already have a hardware fader, you want to click on the plus button and then click on hardware. I already have mine up here and it already has a list of all of my recording devices here. So I don't need to do that. Now, to give you a visual, think about adding a fader in the mixer here as adding a physical jack on the mix create. So by adding a hardware fader to the mixer, we've added a virtual jack that we can patch into. We wanna take the audio that's coming from the gaming PC and patch it into the mix create so that we can monitor its audio. So with your hardware fader added, you want to find where the audio is coming from. On the streaming PC, that is your blue jack, your line in blue jack. To monitor that device, click on the little checkbox next to the device that the audio is coming from. Now, the second cable that we hooked up starting from the streaming PC and going to the gaming PC that is just handling our mic audio. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have a mic fader and you wanna make sure that your mic is selected as a device. And obviously with the meters bouncing here, you know that my voice is currently being detected by MixCreate. Next, head down to the routing table where you see voice chat mic. Click on the little chevron to the right of that hover over copy mic output to, and you want to select the audio out or the green port on the back of your streaming PC. That tells the Beacon Mix Create to take only the microphone and send it out that cable into your gaming PC. With that change made, if I come back to the gaming PC and I right click and I go to sounds, on the recording tab, and I look at line in, you can see as I'm talking, my voice meters are bouncing up and down. This line in, the blue jack on your gaming PC, this is your default recording device for everything. OBS, Discord, Audacity, your browser, anything that could be using your mic on your gaming PC, that's gonna be your new default recording device. So right now is gonna be a good opportunity to set your default playback and recording devices, and that's what I have outlined here. So on the gaming PC, the line in blue is your default recording device, and the line out green is your default playback device. On the streaming PC, oh God, 
On the streaming PC, your default playback device should be the chat, which is why the Beacon Mix Create, and then your default recording device can be your microphone. On the gaming PC in Audacity, for example, my recording device is the line in the Realtek Blue. Same thing if I were to open Discord. If I click on my settings and I go to voice and audio, my default recording device is line in and my default output device is my audio out, that green device that goes over to the streaming PC. Now, as far as configuration in OBS, if you're a GoXLR user, this will look familiar. You just have the one channel where all of your audio is going in. So if you were to go to File and Settings and open up Audio, my desktop audio are both disabled and I only have one channel, which is the Audience Mix, which is the submix of the Mix Create. So you want to have your personal mix be your headphones and make sure that your audience mix is selected here as well. And if you have your audience selected in OBS, then all of your audio, your microphone, your streaming PC, desktop audio, your gaming PC, all your gaming PC audio will all show in this one channel. So if I was to bring up a YouTube video on my gaming PC, you see that it's playing in OBS. Okay, let's go over a couple what ifs. What if you hook up your two computers with ground loop isolators and you still have really bad EMI? You, the interference, the hissing, the whining, the humming. To get one thing clear, this isn't a beacon issue. This is just an audio issue. It's, it's been around forever. There is an alternate solution that unfortunately requires you to spend a little bit more money. The problem with computers is the DAC, the digital to audio converter, those little ports on the back of your motherboard that handle audio, they are usually crap and they get a lot of interference from all of the computer parts on the inside of your computer. What you can do is use an external DAC or an external audio interface to send your audio instead of using the green jack on the back of the computer. I have used the FX Audio DAC X6. I have used Behringer UM2s. I've used the Behringer Xenix 302s to output audio. Any USB device outside of your computer that can be in charge of sending audio. In my previous setup, I had two USB audio interfaces that all they did was send out my audio. So as opposed to using the green audio out on both computers, I connected a USB interface with a USB cable and then used a single RCA to 3.5 millimeter TRS cable that plugged into the line in on the other computer. Skipping the use of the motherboard audio can really clear up a lot of issues. What if you want to use multi-track recording in OBS with a dual PC setup? Unfortunately, you're kind of out of luck with the Beacon Mix Create as well as the GoXLR and the Wavelink software. Because all of these products send your game, your mic, your alerts, your browser all over a single stereo channel, OBS doesn't have a way to differentiate that audio. It sees it all as a single incoming signal. Because you're managing all of your levels and your audio tracks outside of the software, you really don't have much of a choice. So this is really something that is yet to be solved. And what if none of this is working. Well, thankfully, Beacon has a public Discord that you can hop into to ask some questions. They have tech support channels dedicated to each device, and you can also head to their website where they have a knowledge base where they answer a lot of frequently asked questions. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you for this video. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to check it out. If you have any questions at all, please leave me a question in the comments. I'll do my best to get to it. Alternatively, if you want to use the tech support channel in our Discord to ask questions along these lines, you're welcome to do that. A link for the Discord will be down in the description below. Again, thank you for your time today. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon.